Hi again then guys, and welcome to, of course, another speed build for Gran Turismo Sport, this time a slightly slower vehicle, around the mid-250 region, the Aston Martin Vulcan. This car, in a funny kind of way, uh, occupies a similar place to the TVR Speed 12 in this game, because it's got a huge amount of power. The top speed, though, doesn't necessarily mimic that, partially due to its hefty downforce. It's kind of similar visually, I even did the livery for it. And in terms of the handling, it's similar again to the Speed 12 because it's not the fastest thing out there, but it is faster than people generally give it credit for. So it actually shares quite a bit in common. Now as far as the upgrades go, of course you want to increase the power as high as it can go. I would also recommend, as always, dropping the weight as low as it can go as well. That really helps to loosen up the steering through corners. Traction control, of course, is down to you. It is a very powerful rear-wheel drive car. I would recommend having it off though especially at high speeds, it's not entirely necessary. We've got super soft tyres, of course, for the maximum grip. As far as the suspension, I would recommend 70mm, which is 10mm higher than the lowest setting. The frequency we've got as high as possible. Anti-roll on 3, with both the compression and the rebound on the dampers as low as they can go. So if you've used my tunes before, no surprises there. And predominantly that is about the stability and the handling through the kerns, <laughs> through the corners or the turns even. Camber angle, I've got neutral. Now, you could give it one degree, or even two, if you feel the need, but I've gone for zero at least to begin with, because I would not really recommend taking this car up around 300 with draft. It could theoretically do it, but you're going to struggle because as soon as you lose slipstream, you will drop back, because it's so much slower than those cars. So I would recommend using this thing up against cars that do around 250 to 260. So Dodge Charger Hellcats, Vipers, uh, maybe the Corvette, that kind of stuff. Don't necessarily try to take on Enzos and Nismos because you'll struggle. And definitely don't bother trying to take on Vision GTs because most of the Group 1 versions you won't stand a chance against. We've got Neutral Toe as well. The downforce doesn't seem that high, but of course you've got the diffuser, you've got the wing, you've got the chin splitter. I believe it has a flat floor as well so you've got a lot working against you for top end speed as far as the diff i would recommend 25 for the initial torque then the lowest possible acceleration and braking and again feel free to change those if you feel the need and finally for the gearbox it does have some slipstream potential i actually haven't raced this tune yet so i would appreciate some feedback if you do use it on what the actual red line is in other words the peak speed when you're in someone's draft. On its own, 255 is of course what you saw from the thumbnail. I predict it should probably do in the 275 to 280 region with slipstream. So again, if you need it to do more, of course you can drop the final drive, but as far as the gears themselves, with of course the fully customized transmission, auto setting of 267 miles per hour, but then for the gears themselves, they're 2.15, 1575, 1225, 975, 800, and 675 with that final drive of 3.1. Now, if you do need it to do more slipstream, which chances are you probably will, you could drop that to 3 or even, say, 2.9 or lower if you feel the need, but of course you will lose speed on your own. And in this car, that's not really a sacrifice you want to make, because you don't exactly have a great top speed anyway, in comparison to a lot of the others. So, that's it for the tune. There's certainly plenty you can change around if you need to, but what you want to see is this car actually performing at that speed. Now, I will say that for a hardcore, high downforce, essentially race car, at the very least a hardcore track day hypercar, the top speed is actually very good. It's got a lot working against it in that regard, but it is still very good. It's just in comparison to a lot of the more low drag vehicles like your Corvettes and your Enzos, it doesn't look as good when you compare it to those. Now, it's not the fastest thing around, of course not. Nobody really expects it to be. So this is, as I said about cars like the Veneno from Lamborghini, it's more the kind of car and the kind of tune even that I would recommend using if you specifically like the car or if you just want to be different. And I can totally understand that. I use cars like that all the time. Another perfect example is the Drift Turn 14 Subaru. It's not the fastest thing out there, but it sure is an oddball choice and a surprisingly good one. You could do a similar thing with this or the Veneno or a couple of others. So if you do decide to use this tune, of course, I hope you have a ton of fun with it. I hope you potentially even win some races with it as well, especially if you take on cars that are in a similar kind of top speed region 
as I said, like Vipers, like Charger Hellcats, maybe some of the Corvettes, that kind of stuff. But overall, that's it for this build. Of course, click here on screen to see all of my others. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.